Apple released the M1 Ultra and made some bold claims. They showed charts where it is higher performing than the i9-12900K and higher performing than the BF GPU, the RTX 3090. And a recent Geekbench score says it's faster than a 28-core Mac Pro and close to a 64-core Threadripper. Are these claims true? Is the new M1 Ultra that powerful? Let's get into it. Apple introduced the M1 Ultra at its March 8th event and surprised many by releasing a new desktop Mac in the Mac Studio. Now Apple showed a chart where the M1 Ultra was higher performing than a 16-core PC desktop. And when you read the footnote, you find that they're referring to the i9-12900K. I found this rather stunning. When you draw the lines to the performance scale, Apple is claiming the M1 Ultra is about 25% faster than the i9. This didn't make any sense to me. So I looked at the other chart they showed with the M1 Max chip. This is very relevant since the M1 Ultra is just two M1 Max chips glued together. And from that chart, they are showing the M1 Max is about the same performance as an i5-12600K. And that didn't quite make sense. Now I spent three months with the M1 Max chip, both indoors and outdoors. The M1 Max and I are old friends. And if I compare the Cinebench multi-core scores, you can see that the M1 Max scored 12,373, where the i5 scored 17,573, which is 42% greater. Even in single core, the M1 Max scored 1532, while the i5 scored 1862, which is 21% higher. The M1 Max is not about the same as an i5. The only thing that is the same is that they are both 10 cores. Getting back to the M1 Ultra, if we assume perfect scaling through that silicon interposer, then the score of the M1 Ultra should double from that of the M1 Max. That would give the M1 Ultra a multi-core score of about 24,700. However, the i9 regularly scores around 28,000. Even in single core, the M1 Ultra, just being two M1 Max chips, would have the same single core score, unless they bumped the frequency again like they did with the M1, See part two for a complete M1 CPU comparison if you want to learn more. And the i9 with a score of 1951 is 27% faster. Again, Apple is conveying a message that the M1 Ultra is 25% faster than the i9-12900K, and it isn't. They must be using some cherry pick benchmarks to make this chart. However, they didn't tell us which one it was. And even though Cinebench isn't the end-all be-all of benchmarks, in general use, I find it to be very representative at understanding performance differences between CPUs. Moving from an M1 Max to an M1 Ultra would be like moving from the 12-core Threadripper to a 24-core Threadripper. Your day-to-day -day experience will only differ when you are pushing all 24 cores to the max. To demonstrate, I looked at Apple's website, where they showed CPU performance improvements in five different applications, and I annotated the chart with CPU and GPU information based on the footnotes, and I highlighted what was tested. These numbers tend to be very representative as they are very specific tests. In NASA Tetris, a computational fluid dynamics application, the M1 Ultra is almost double the performance of the M1 Max. In Houdini FX, a physical simulation tool, the M1 Ultra is 52% faster. In Photoshop, it's only 14% faster. In Vectorworks, it's 23% faster, and in Affinity Photo, it is only 7% faster. If I take just the averages, the M1 Ultra is only 37% faster than the M1 Max, and more accurately, taking the Geo mean, the M1 Ultra is only 25% faster than the M1 Max. Twice the chip for twice the money for just 25% more CPU performance. Moving on to the GPU comparison, Apple showed a chart comparing the M1 Ultra GPU performance to a high-end discrete GPU, and when you read the footnote, they're referring to the BF GPU, the RTX 3090. When you draw the lines to the performance scale, they are showing the M1 Ultra has higher performance than a 3090. Now in part five, I did extensive benchmarking in the most neutral application I could find in 3 Mark Wildlife Extreme, as it is optimized for both platforms. And I did the comparisons of the M1 Max to desktop GPUs, both past and present, that included the RTX 3090. In that video, I said, 
The M1 Max performance will need to more than double to get close to current gen desktop GPUs. Well, if you double the cores, you should be able to double the performance. And if you do that, you find that the performance of the M1 Ultra to be within 9% of the 3090, but not higher. To see how well the 64 core GPU scaled in applications, I went back to Apple's website. In Final Cut Pro, the M1 Ultra GPU is 43% faster than the M1 Max. In Compressor, at Transcoding Pro is Video, the M1 Ultra with double the media encoders is 68% faster. In Affinity Photo, it's 32% faster. In Boris FX, which are visual effects plugins, it's 30% faster. In Cinema 4D, it's only 18% faster. And in DaVinci Resolve, rendering a 10 second 4K clip at 24 frames per second, it's 77% faster. Putting all of those into a table and taking the average of those applications, the M1 Ultra GPU is 45% faster than the M1 Max, and the Geomean is 40% faster. In summary, know the application that you are using, and if the performance in that application scales by doubling the cores. If you don't, then you may be disappointed that you just spent double the money for a modest increase in performance. But the most egregious claims came from Apple at the end of the Mac Studio presentation when they summed up the performance as the M1 Max is 3.4 times faster than the fastest iMac. Not up to, not at this very specific benchmark that they didn't call out, just 3.4 times faster and it's a huge upgrade. The other claim, the M1 Ultra is 80% faster than the top of the line Mac Pro. Not up to, not at a very specific benchmark, that they didn't call out, just 80% faster. In day-to-day -day use, the M1 Max that has been out since October of 2021 in the MacBook Pro is not 3.4 times faster than the fastest iMac. People out there have both of those machines and they don't come to that conclusion. And the M1 Ultra in day-to-day -day use is not going to be 80% faster than the top-of-the-line Mac Pro. These two statements at the end of their Mac Studio presentation without any references or footnotes came off as a summary of the performance improvements that you can expect, which is so misleading. This is coming from a company that wants you to believe that they are the industry leader in customer privacy. For a company who wants you to believe that you can trust them with your health, to come out with such misleading statements that are not backed up with any data references doesn't seem like a trustworthy company. Why would I trust a company with my health and privacy if I can't even trust them with their performance claims? Apple is so much better than that, but they let their marketing department mislead people. And misleading people doesn't build trust. And let me know in the comments below if you think Apple is sending misleading messages. Fix your marketing department, Apple. To learn more how the M1 family of chips compares with other CPUs and GPUs, check out my videos here. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.